GHS 62. Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, 
It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Aseldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Chapter 2 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
was crucified just for me. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Somebody there I said, Praise the Lord. I'm happy to have you here. Without you, what could we do? But tonight, at the message, your power comes to you. Your life will turn around. My life will turn around. Yes. Say that now. My life will turn around. Yes. Uh, don't you worry about the things happening around you there. That rain is coming from heaven. Another rain is coming from heaven. Yes. The rain of power. The rain of deliverance. And the reign of salvation for everyone. What are you there? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because we know with you all things are possible. And we know that tonight you are going to touch, you are going to reach everyone. You reach our soul. You reach our spirit. You reach our body. You reach our circumstances. And great things are going to happen here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every word of promise, every word of power, every word of testimony that comes out, you multiply it to take effect in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down tonight as we come in the name of the Lord with assurance of the Lord or the power of the Lord the Lord tonight will visit you will touch you where you are and will do great wonderful things in every life in Jesus name we're here because of the God of all possibilities the God who is able able to save able to sanctify able to heal able to deliver able to transform every life able to change everything in the past and change it in such a way that the people who saw you yesterday when they see you tomorrow they might not recognize you because of the mighty power of the lord that will touch you tonight in jesus name Tonight we're talking about the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of Jesus. The miraculous possibilities in the mercy of Jesus. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him. 
crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. That those blind men, they came asking for the mercy of Jesus. And as you come tonight, and you are asking for the mercy of Jesus, like miracles attended them, miracles will attend you as you get, as you have, as you possess the mercy of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 28, verse 28 says, And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. They came to him they came not to the apostles not to the pastors who were there not to the leaders ministers who were there they came unto him jesus and that's the one you come to tonight and when people came to christ those days like today he always blesses them he always turns their life around their lives around and he always performs the miracle of mercy in their lives and tonight as they came and you come and you come to him the miracle of mercy will meet you there and you will not run back home before the miracle of mercy gets to you because that miracle of mercy is coming now and then it says and jesus says unto them believe ye that i'm able to do this and they said unto him yea lord yes lord the lord is asking you that problem you have what you think is big i understand it's big for you it's small for jesus it's normal for jesus to touch people like you and to remove all the infirmity all the problem all the sickness everything you have troubling your life here we have come today and the god of mercy will touch you in jesus name he asked them do you believe that i the son of god i the christ i the savior i the lord i your healer and redeemer do you believe that i can do this and he said yes lord when you say yes lord unto him that finalizes your problem that settles your problem yes lord i know you can to remove all my sin i know you can to change my life and remove the powerlessness of my life and give me the power to go and live in newness of life yes i know you can i know you will and then to take all the demonic powers and forces tormenting me and troubling me to take all that away yes i know you can and when you say yes to the lord that you know he can it will work in your life this night you will not miss the miracle working power of god and then in verse 29 it tells us it says then touched he their eyes he'll touch the blind eyes tonight he'll touch those limb legs tonight it will touch all those areas where you have the challenge and the problem tonight and it will take away every pain you feel it will take away every oppression in your life it will take away everything that is making your life not stable not peaceful and not steady and it touched their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you verse 30 in verse 30 it says and their eyes were opened and your eyes will be opened and your legs will receive strength and your heart will receive strength and the impossibility of your life tonight will become a testimony yeah. we're looking at the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of jesus in the mercy of jesus jesus the same yesterday 
today and forever and his mercy remains the same yesterday today and forever and his power and his love and his compassion everything and its attributes remains the same yesterday today and forever and as you are there the mercy of the lord will meet you right there his compassion will meet you right there his salvation will get to you right there and the new life eternal life will get to you right there and your miracle of healing and your miracle of deliverance will get to you right there tonight in jesus name and their eyes were opened they will open your eyes the miraculous possibilities in the mercy of jesus three things we're looking at number one number one his manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick. His manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick. Number two, his mediatorial mercy for the release of slaves. Medi mediatorial, he mediates for us. He pleads for us. He's the one in heaven representing you standing in for you before the heavenly father he sees on the right hand of majesty and is there on your behalf and when you pray he adds his authority he adds his decree he adds his agreement to the prayer you pray and he says father that's the one i died for and he's asking uh, for the benefit of my death, for the benefit of my resurrection. That is the one I died for. He's asking for salvation. He's asking for recovery. He's asking for restoration. He's asking uh, for renewal of life. And because he died for you, and because he mediates for you on the right hand of majesty on high, that's why tonight, that mercy will reach you there. Yeah. Number three, his multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls. His multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls. He will renew you today. Yeah. He will revive you today. Yeah. He will restore everything you ought to have in a spiritual life he restored that to you tonight in jesus number one number one the manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick we're looking at nehemiah chapter 9 i read from verse 19 i want you to see something here listen to me if you don't have a bible there nehemiah chapter 9 verse 19 yet thou in thy manifold mercies that's it that's it in the manifold mercies of the lord and he says i am god i change not he had manifold mercies on the people at that time and he still has manifold mercies for everyone at this time like he delivered them of good old days he will deliver you he says you didn't forsake them in the wilderness the pillar of the clouds departed not from them by day to lead them in the way neither the pillar of fire by night to show them the light and the way wherein they should go it tells us in verse 20 it says in verse 20 thou givest also thy good spirit to instruct them because of his manifold mercies and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth because of his manifold mercies and gavest them water for their thirst. In verse 27, verse 27 says, Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand 
of the enemies when they went away from him who vexed them and in the time of their trouble when they cried unto thee in the time of their trouble when he cried unto thee and in your time of trouble as you call on the Lord and you cry unto the Lord and you send your SOS save our soul you send that to God the Lord because of his manifold mercy he will answer you thou hadest them from heaven and according to thy look at this look at this and according to thy manifold mercies thou givest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies and the manifold mercy of the lord today will save you will forgive you will take that cord of sin that binds you and ties you up today you'll have forgiveness freedom redemption and the salvation of the lord i want you to look at uh, matthew chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 20 matthew chapter 20 verse 30 in matthew chapter 20 verse 30 it says and behold two men sitting by the wayside when they heard that jesus passed by that jesus passed by anointed with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he passed by he's passing by your side right there i said he's passing by your side right there and the lord will take away the infirmity the impossibility you have in your life he passed by and they were told they cried out saying have mercy don't talk about marriage have mercy don't talk about your good works have mercy don't talk about your riches have mercy don't talk about your goodness have mercy don't talk about your religion have mercy on us O lord thou son of david look at verse 31 in verse 31 and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, The people who could not help them, the people who could not perform the miracle on them, they told those two blind men, they said, Shut up. Satan will not shut you up. The followers of Satan will not shut you up. Enemies that are acting like friend will not shut you up. You know, they were acting like, you know, we are friends. What if you ask and you are disappointed? What if you ask and you get nothing? You'll be so disappointed, you'll be deserting, you'll not even want to, you know, do anything any other way. And so they said, shut up, keep quiet. Even those of us that can see, we're not getting any attention from him. But they didn't keep quiet until your miracle arrives, you will not keep quiet. Until the power of the Lord will touch you, you will not keep quiet. The devil will not shut your mouth at the time of prayer. <laughs> Let me hear you. You will not go to sleep at the time of prayer. At the time when the mercy of God, the miracle of God, and the healing of God, and the salvation of God is coming to you from heaven. Nothing will shut your mouth in Jesus' name. And so they cried the most, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Look at verse 32. We're told in verse 32, and Jesus stood still and called them, and called them, and called them. If Jesus calls you, will you answer? I said, if Jesus calls you, will you answer? Now, how? Does Jesus 
colors today. Look at the big man there. Look at the honorable man there. Look at the highest placed man there. He wants Mr. So-and-so. And the high man, he doesn't stand up and then go to him and say, I want you. He sends somebody and you say, go tell so-and-so that I, Mr. Honorable, I am calling her, I am calling him. And then that person will go there and say, Ma, sir, Mr. Honorable so-and-so is calling you. And that man will get up. He knows that messenger came from Mr. Honorable. And then he will follow him and get to the high man. What am I telling you? Now, when Jesus calls today, it's high in heaven. It's great in heaven. It's by the right hand side of majesty on high. He sends us, me, errant boy. He said, go call him. Go call her. And I came tonight. I'm not the one calling you. I'm just an errant boy evangelist. I say, Jesus, the great one. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Deliverer is calling you. And then as I tell you, don't, don't think about me and say, uh-huh, he is so and so. He belongs to that. He belongs to that. I'm not the one. Jesus calls you tonight. I said Jesus calls you tonight. Online, as you are there. Do I know you? But Jesus knows you. And you are there over the radio, over the television. Do I, do I know you? But Jesus knows you. And he uses his errand boy evangelist to come and tell you, Sir, ma, boy, girl, man, woman is calling you. You will rise up when the time comes. You raise up your hand. You give your heart, your life to Jesus. And as you answer that call, it will forgive your sin. It will save your life. The search, he calls thee. He calls them. And he said, what will ye that I shall do unto you. Look at verse 33. Verse 33, they say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. That our eyes may be opened. Verse 34, it says, so Jesus had compassion on them. That's what they were asking for, compassion, mercy, the love of God that comes from heaven. And that love, that's the love that saves us. That's the love that redeems us. That's the love that heals us. That's the love that takes the pain and the sickness and the infirmity away from our body. He had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. And they followed him. Why did they follow him? After all, they've got the sight and their healing. They said, we have other needs. And so, if he has done this one, as we fought, we're not going to be far from him anymore. We're going to be following him so that any other need in our lives, in our soul, in our spirit, in our body, in our family, he has done this one, and there is more from where that came from. There is more. That miracle, one miracle came and he said, there is more. There are more miracles where that false miracle came from. As you come to the Lord today and he forgives you. And he gives you recovery. You want to understand that in the treasury of God, that's not the only miracle available. There is more from where that came from. There is more from where where that came from because of that you keep on following him i will follow jesus 
I will follow Jesus. Rain or sunshine, I will follow Jesus. In my city, in my village, I will follow Jesus. In my apartment, from now on, I will follow Jesus. And as you follow him, all other needs in your life will be given unto you in Jesus' name. His manifold mercy for the recovery of the sick. We'll come to number two. Number two, his mediatorial mercy for the release of slaves. His mediatorial mercy. That mediatorial mercy, the mercy of the mediator. The mercy of the one that stands by the right hand of God in heaven. The mercy of the one and the mediation of the one that stands and represents you. As you think about him and you pray unto him, you come to him and you say, you are my mediator. I accept you. I accept no other one. I rely on you. I rely on no other one as mediator. You are my mediator tonight. It will release you. I said it will release you. It will release you from slavery. Look at this in First Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading there from verse 3. This is God good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, it says, who will have all men to be saved? He wants all men to be saved. He desires, he wants to have all men, you there, you there, over there, anywhere you are, he desires that all men shall be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Saved one, then to come as we follow him to the knowledge of the truth, the truth of his release, the truth of his redemption. The truth of his righteousness, the truth of his revelation. After he saves us, he doesn't want to just leave us there and born again now. All right, when a child is born, the mother knows that a job has not finished. He'll clean up that child, he will feed that child. She will give knowledge to that child. What does that child know about the world into which he is born? It is the ongoing training, teaching, instruction of the mother that will make the child now to know the knowledge of the truth of the world he has now come into. And when you are born again, you are born again by the spirit of the Lord Then you are saved But you need to keep on now with the Lord To come unto the knowledge of the truth Look at verse 5 In verse 5 For there is one God And one mediator Mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Then in verse 6, it tells us, it says, who gave himself a ransom for all, for you, for me, for us all, for those who are here, for those who have heard, for those who have not heard. He gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 1 and you as he quickened made alive revived restored regenerated who were dead in trespasses and sins then in verse 2 it says wherein 
in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience of disobedience uh, hold on look at this we were slaves to disobedience but now is mediation his redemption his power his sacrifice came to release us from the slavery of disobedience actually number one there's been addiction in our lives we're addicted to something maybe substance we're addicted to something maybe liquid we're addicted to something and we couldn't do without that and that addiction is spoiling and destroying our lives we became slaves of addiction and christ came in his mediation and he came to release us he came to save us he came to set us free from the slavery to addiction we were in a slavery to be bad behavior bad behavior and people were saying how is this man how is this woman having bad behavior like this it's slavery and we could not dis deliver ourselves it's the mediation of the lord jesus christ what he did on the cross of calvary that came to release and to set free the slaves of bad behavior now we urge addiction slavery to carnality we were just not spiritual our language carnal our thinking carnal our disposition carnal everything about us we may look nice on the outside but we were slaves to carnality and jesus came to release and to set the slaves of carnality free it will set you free tonight but we were slaves to disobedience the right way says go this way but because we are slaves the chains of disobedience were in our leg on our hands on our neck on our spirit on our soul as slaves to disobedience christ came as the mediator and he says i'll break every yoke in your life Amen. Yeah. I will release you from the slavery to disobedience. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. We were slaves to evil. Slaves to evil. The goodness of God is all around, but because it's our slaves. And as slaves, we didn't have any way to release ourselves your release has come tonight everything that is evil evil character evil conduct evil direction evil decision everything that is evil that you are changed to and you know it that I want to even do evil but when i plan to do it when i want to do good evil is present with me i have good intention and i have good aspiration and i have good ambition but the evil i don't want to do that is what i do we well, were slaves to evil f we well, were slaves to filthiness filthiness filthy behavior in the night 
when other people are not there. Behind the curtain, when other people are not there, and my neighbors will not know this, my friends will not know this, and those who are very close to me, they will not know this, because it's in the dark. And we use the darkness for the filthiness of the flesh. And one day you said, it's enough. I don't want to do this again, but then you're pulled back to that again. Why? Because of slavery. And that slavery tonight, the Lord will set you free. You've been in that slave trade, and you are even getting other people to that slavery in filthiness. But tonight, the Lord will set you free. And your companions in filthiness, the Lord will set them free. Everyone tonight, as you call on the name of the Lord, and you say, I want release from the slavery of addiction, of bad behavior, of carnality, of disobedience, of filthiness, of evil, and then from the guilty gratification. You, you gratify yourself. You say you are enjoying something. All it brings is guilt. All it brings is condemnation. And because you know that you've struggled, you've tried, you've prayed, you've desired, and yet that slavery is there tonight, the Lord will set you free. That's why it says, wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, the spirit of slavery that now walketh in the children of disobedience and then he tells us in verse 3 it says in verse 3 among whom also we had a conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Look at verse 4. Here is the good news. Here is how redemption comes and release comes from uh, that slavery. But God, who is rich in mercy, why it not for the mercy of God? The mediation of the mediator would not have reached you. But because of the mercy of God, mediatorial mercy now comes to you. God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Verse 5 then tells us, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together. But Christ, by grace, are you saved. That grace will come to you tonight. And when the grace comes to a slave, the grace will not leave him in that addiction, in that bad behavior, in that carnality, in that disobedience, in that evil. The grace of God will not leave him, will not leave her in filthiness and guilty gratification. The grace of God will get you out and set you free tonight. And tomorrow, you still remain free. All the rest of your life, you still remain free as you are following Jesus and you are drinking in and taking it as grace, as grace, as grace that saved you will keep you saved in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, For by grace are you saved. We don't have to walk for it. We don't have to search for it. We don't have to go to River Jordan, to the depth of the sea to look for it. We don't have to go to Jerusalem, Israel, anywhere. Where you are, that grace of God will reach out to you and set you free from the slavery tormenting your life. For by grace are you saved. And it says, it is through faith. And that not 
of yourselves it is the gift of god mercy bringing gift from heaven the gift of salvation the gift of release the gift of the righteousness of christ it brings that gift to you tonight it is the gift of god are you waiting for the gift i said are you waiting for the gift the gift of salvation the gift of release from slavery it will give you tonight in jesus name. we're looking at number three now number three is multiplied mercy multiplied for the renewal of all souls it will renew you it will transform you it will change everything that needs to be changed in your life in your heart in your spirit in your soul and renewal righteousness will come to you tonight in jesus name we're looking at psalm 51 reading from verse 1 psalm 51 verse 1 have mercy upon me O god it's always by the mercy of god whether well, it's manifold mercy it's mercy whether it's mediatorial mercy it's mercy or multiplied mercy it is mercy that comes and gives you the renewal the multiplied mercy for the renewal of all souls have mercy upon me upon me say upon me you know there are people that come to god and they say we have sinned uh -huh. have mercy on us uh -huh. show mercy to the world you have not started praying we're all thirsty uh -huh. give water to everyone on earth uh -huh. and give refreshing to everyone in the world you've not started asking you must ask for yourself you are the one that feels the chain of the bondage of sin and so david came like you ought to come have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions and then in verse 2 it says wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity cleanse me from my sin it's when you call upon the lord like that and you make it personal the lord will forgive all your sins look at verse 10 in verse 10 create in me personal you come to the lord and you say create in me a clean heart oh god renew a right spirit within me and as you ask tonight you will not be denied the salvation of the lord is for the young is for the old is for the boy and the girl is for the man and the woman is for the lowly is for the high we know we have all sinned you know you have sinned and you come to the lord and you say i need recovery from my sickness i need release from my slavery i need renewal for my soul look at uh, psalm 103 and i'm reading there from verse 1 psalm 103 verse 1 bless the lord O oh my soul and all that is within me bless the his holy name verse uh, to who bless the lord oh my soul forget not all his benefits all his multiplied mercies and then it says in verse 3 it says in verse 3 who forgiveth all thine iniquities that's what you have tonight it will forgive all your iniquities who healeth 
all thy diseases the lord will forgive and the lord will heal all your diseases in jesus name and then in verse 4 it says who redeemeth thy life from destruction and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies multiplied mercies multiplied mercies to give you salvation to give you redemption to give you healing to give you deliverance on the basis of his multiplied mercies and then in verse 5 he tells us who satisfies thy mouth with good things he'll satisfy you tonight so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles renewal has come for who renewal for who restoration for who recovery for who and all the blessings that we need that christ paid for on the cross of calvary for who your time has come salvation has come healing has come deliverance has come the lord will renew you restore you save you change your life take the judgment the punishment of sin away from your life and the lord will get you ready for heaven in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed you want that salvation you want that relieves from slavery you're being a slave to all those things and your life is not as righteous as it ought to be as acceptable to god as it ought to be and you, you say i recognize now i didn't have any power to set myself free but christ has the power the power to forgive the power to renew the power to bruise all the slaveholder in your life and get rid of everything it's bowed and eyes closed as you want that forgiveness and that salvation now anywhere you are raise up your hand you say lord i'm here i am here i must have that redemption that remission of sin that removal of sin that blotting out of all my sin i must have that tonight and this is the moment if you're raising up your hand please stand up wherever you are because now the salvation of christ from christ by christ is coming to you now raise up your hand and stand up he's the one calling you he calls you and he says get up come to me i want to forgive you i want to save you i want to change your life i want to break that chain of slavery slavery to sin in your life Raise up your hand and stand up. God bless you there. God bless you. Online, online, wherever you are, you've been bound by the chains and the shackles of sin. Maybe people don't know, but you know, wherever you are there, in the privacy of your room, in the chamber where you are, in the congregation where you are, raise up that hand and say, yes, Lord, it's me. I must have that salvation, that forgiveness, and that regeneration renewal tonight. Raise up that hand and stand up and pray with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone responding now to your call. I pray, Lord, forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray that you take all their sins, bundle them together, and put all those sins in the sea of God's forgetfulness. That you will not remember any of those sins against them anymore. Take 
the power break the power of sin from their lives take the pollution of sin away from their lives lord pardon them forgive them save them give them a new life in christ even tonight in jesus name let your spirit bear witness with their hearts their sins are forgiven their lives are transformed they have the salvation of the lord and give them the grace to keep on following after christ from this time on the joy of salvation, the peace in salvation, and the victory in salvation be given to every one of you in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please, uh, friend, keep on standing. Uh, our counselors will come to you there. And they will, they will not take a long time. You feel those papers. It will help us to keep on uh, helping you as you follow Christ. I call on our pastor to take care of this session before I come back to pray for your healing. Amen. We are happy for you. You have gotten something that the Lord has brought you here for. As you have given your life to Jesus, you have gotten the best gift and the miracle of mercy. So, counselors, all our workers, the choir leaders, quickly move in now and begin to take their details. Move as fast as possible so that we can reach as many that have given their lives unto the Lord. You remember? Get their full names, their phone numbers, and their addresses. Then remember also, we have special convert lunch hour by 3 p.m. We had it yesterday, today, and we are having it also tomorrow by 3 p.m. So, let's quickly do that. Counselors, move on and begin to do your best. Be as fast as possible. If you are also watching online and you have gotten the message of salvation, you have identified with Christ, there is a link on your screen now. Please click it. Fill the form there so that we can assist you in your newfound faith. You're a believer, you're a child of God, you need to be helped. As our Father in the Lord said, if a woman give birth to a baby, she has started greater work of nursing, cleaning, building up, teaching how to live in this world environment in this world so likewise you're a new believer a child of god now that's why we are getting your details in order to help you and to assist you in your new found faith either you are listening on radio or television you have given also your life to the lord jesus you send your names the phone numbers and your location where you are, all over the globe, either through WhatsApp or SMS, to this very number, plus 234-915-444-9263. 
Please take the number again. Plus 234-915-444-9263. There will be special lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow after service. By it will be immediate after the service tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is the last Sunday of the month, and we are all those that are in Mina here. We are coming for special, special Sunday service, and it's for all. Remember, this place is not a church, but we use it for the crusade and for all other things. So please. All are invited. The Sunday service is meant for all. And in other countries, other locations in Nigeria, Africa, is a special, special combined service. So don't miss it at all. Our Father in the Lord, the convener of GCK, is going to minister unto us all over the globe. So be available and be partaker of this very program. So, counselors, move now and write the details of this, our brethren, brothers and sisters that have identified themselves that they want to serve this Lord. The Lord has forgiven them. The servant of God has prayed for them. They are now children of God. Your sins are forgiven. You are pardoned. You have obtained the mercy of God now. For the rest of us here now, begin to pray. Remember, remember, the man of God said that today there will be abundance of rains of miracle. Something big is coming your way. If you believe it, can I hear you say, GCK, amen. amen. Can I hear you are amen again? Amen. Your miracles are confirmed already in Jesus' name. Amen. So you begin to pray for yourself and say, Lord, I will not let you go. Except you bless me. Except you heal me. Except you deliver me. Begin to pray. As you wait now, counselor, counselors, we are waiting for you. Our Father is ready for you. Be fast, please. Do your best. Be fast. Those that can write, let them write on their own. Those that could not, then help them so that we can be fast to cover it. Counselors, the leaders, that have the flags, check your area. If the council is done, then begin to wave the flags for us. You wave it so that we can see that you are true. On my right hand side, if you are finished, can you wave the flag for us to see? Okay, no flags yet. Out of my front, at the center here, if you are finished, can you raise the flag, please? Okay, be fast about it. Out of my left hand side, quickly, quickly, if you are finished, can you wave the flags so that we know that you are finished? Because the man of God is loaded. The anointing is here. The power is here. And that miracles, rays of miracle will come down. You know, the Lord has blessed us the first night, the second night yesterday, today being the third night. It will be a special night indeed. Can I hear amen? amen? Begin to pray for yourself and your miracle will come your way. Counselors, we are still waiting for you, please. If you are finished, just wave the flags now. Okay? By my left hand side, is done. Out of center here. If you are finished, 
Lift up your hands very well and wave it. By my left hand, they have, they have waved the flags out of our center. You are outside there also, in any part of the globe. Attend to the new converts. Thank you. I'm seeing flags at the center back. Out of my right. I'm not seeing flags there because the converts are many actually. They are coming to the Lord. We are happy for that. Counselors, by my right hand side, you are the one we are waiting for. So others, if you have finished your side, quickly move to my right hand side and attend to the brethren. Let's get their details. Don't forget that Monday and Tuesday will be ministers, professional, businessmen and women at Deeper Life Campground, Chachanga, Abuja Road. We have been enjoying the blessing of the Lord on Friday and today. And we still have two more days. All ministers, church founders, businessmen and women, professionals, all are for you. Come along and get the secret of success. Secret that will build you up and that you will never remain the same. We that have been coming, we are enjoying the blessings. Counselors, by my right hand, I have not seen flags at all. Quick, quick, please, so that we can do the blessing and waiting you is there for you. Remember, there will also be global convocation program. Our Father in the Lord is moving to Ibadan immediately after here. On 38th, there will be special program for all our youth. All over the globe is global. So let's prepare for it. And let's be praying for our Father in the Lord. As your heart is a man of vision, man of burden, man that wants to reach out to all categories of people all over the globe. Counselors, by my right hand. Others are finished. Can you wave, please? Okay, thank you very much. Our Father is ready now, he's coming. Shall we stand up on our feet as we welcome him for our miracles? <coughs> You're welcome, Daddy. Praise the Lord. Your miracle time has come. My miracle time has come. Say it for yourself. Now, did you see those uh, people that received their sight? They were the people that mentioned their problems. What do you want him to do for you? And they said that we might receive uh, our sight. You are the one to mention the problem. Don't wait for me to mention this problem, that problem. Once you mention the problem, I will give confirmation from here. Miracle will happen in your life. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand where you have the problem. Everywhere, in every congregation, in every stage in our country here, every nation, every country, in Africa, everywhere, America, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, tell the Lord what the problem is. You want your blind eyes to open, tell him. You want strength for your waist, for your legs, for your hands, tell him. You want that shorter leg to grow out, tell him. You have any internal problem you want him to touch? 
and you want him to heal deliver set you free tell him and as you've told him i bring confirmation to your desire to your request now in jesus name Keep up that hand and keep the other hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know whenever we mention that name, you never say no. You always say yes. And Lord, I pray for everyone, whatever the challenge may be, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, internal, external. I pray, touch them, heal them now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that great miracle, supernatural miracle, great healing, supernatural healing, for everyone who has mentioned their problem unto you, stretch forth that miracle working hand now, heal them in Jesus' name. Mountain of sickness, mountain of slavery, mountain of infirmity, mountain of long-standing problem i command you come out in jesus name set everyone free to the right to the left to the center over the radio over television online everywhere manifest your miracle of mercy we know it is done it is done in jesus name i pray i got my i got my own i got my own check up where you had a problem before the problem is gone and whatever you are not able to do before if you are deaf now you can hear you are blind now you can see you are lame now you can rise up and walk you had internal bleeding internal problem the lord has touched you now a miracle is there on your body in jesus name